You may have noticed that the latest trend on dashcam technology is mirror dashcams. These dashcams can replace your existing car's mirror and can give you a wider view of what's behind your vehicle, but also record both the front of the vehicle and the rear of the vehicle, giving you assurance that you're gonna have the most evidence in case of a car crash. And on this video, I'm gonna show you the process for how a mirror dashcam is installed. I remember the first time I saw one of these things and I thought it was gonna be really hard and complex. I didn't wanna remove my mirror and it's actually not that hard. I'm gonna go over the three easy steps in which I use to install a mirror dashcam. And step number one is gonna be to mount the new mirror dashcam to the vehicle. Let's take a look at that. And I'm gonna use the two included silicone straps to secure the mirror. I'm just gonna grab onto the strap, pull on it, and then secure it on the hook on the bottom. And I'll repeat the same process for the other one, making sure it fully hooks on here, securing the mirror. And step number two is gonna be to run the cables for the dashcam, which includes a GPS cable, a power cable, and finally a cable for the rear camera. Now all three of these cables really install very similarly, but I wanna show you the techniques that I use for each. Let's take a look at that. And I'll start with the GPS antenna, which I'm gonna plug in into the GPS spot, and then I'm gonna feed the cable towards the direction of the passenger side. And I'm just using my fingers, and in some cases where it's tight, I could use the spatula. Now I reach the A pillar, and now I'm going down towards the bottom of the dash. In this place, I'm gonna use the spatula since it's a little bit tight right here. And I'm gonna continue to feed any excess slack so that the GPS antenna fits nicely on this corner. Next is the rear camera, which I'm gonna plug in right here, and I'm gonna feed this cable in the direction of the driver's side. And it's the same process as I did earlier, using my fingers or using the spatula if the trim is a little bit tight. Once I reach the A pillar of the car, it definitely gets tight in here, so I'm gonna use my fingers and the spatula to make sure that the cable fits in here correctly. And then I'm gonna head towards the back of the vehicle. But it is important to remember that newer vehicles may have an airbag in the A pillar location, which is where I'm crossing the cable for the rear camera and sometimes the power cable. And I have made a separate video in detail showing the potential hazards of what happens when we put a cable in front of an airbag and how I get around it. If you guys wanna check that video out, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Fortunately, this car does not have airbags in the A pillar location, so I'm gonna continue with the installation. And I'm continuing to feed that rear camera cable towards the rear of the vehicle, mostly using my fingers, but in some areas using the spatula to make sure that the cable is fully concealed and hidden from view. Here you can see again where that trim is very loose and very easy to work with, and some areas that are gonna be tighter, I have to use the spatula to make sure that cable is fully hidden. Now you'll notice that as I get closer towards the rear windshield, I'm gonna end up with a lot of excess cable. And this particular car has quite a bit of space in this area, which I can use to hide some of that excess cable away. Now that I've hidden most of the excess, I'm gonna leave a little bit of cable so I can continue down towards the center of the rear windshield. But I'm not gonna stick the rear camera yet to the car. I'm gonna move over to the power. And the power cable is gonna connect into here and then I'm gonna feed this in the direction of the driver's side using the same techniques as I did earlier using my fingers and the spatula were needed to make sure that this is fully bottomed out. As I get closer towards the A pillar the same thing is gonna happen that what happened with the rear camera cable. I may potentially encounter an airbag and this particular car does not have an airbag over this area so I'm gonna continue right here and feed that cable into that A pillar without any issues. Now this cable, the power cable, it has to feed all the way up into the cigarette lighter port of the vehicle, the power outlet. So as you can see, I'm gonna feed the cable down towards the footrest area and I'm feeding it and hiding it into the trim. That way it's not gonna get pinched with the door closes or opens. Once I get closer towards the bottom of the vehicle, I'm gonna hide it underneath the dash. Now in this particular case, I pulled a little bit on the trim to be able to hide it, and now I can hide it in the bottom, but also I'm gonna secure it with some zip ties, and that is gonna ensure that this cable is never gonna fall and get in the way of my assistant 
accelerator pedal or my brake pedal. This area has to be clear for safety and the cable should not be in that area. Now the cable has reached the center portion of the vehicle, which is where the cigarette lighter port is at, and this particular trim is fairly loose. So I'm gonna continue to hide the power cable into here and hide any excess cable right here. And there it is. I have reached the cigarette lighter port of the vehicle and I'm gonna plug this bad boy in. And this particular car has this nice little beauty cover on here, which I can use to hide the cables for the dash cam. And once these cables are hidden, this is gonna give me a nice OEM look. Look how clean this is. I wish more cars came with this little cover. And step number three, which is the final step, is gonna be to mount the rear camera to the vehicle. Let's check that out. And the key to placing the rear camera is making sure that I center that and that it's not gonna be blocked by any defroster lines. So I'm gonna practice the location and once I know where the location is gonna be, I'm gonna peel this, make sure that the windshield is clean, and then I'm gonna stick the camera and I'm gonna hold on here until it fully secures. Now once that's said, I'm gonna hide any excess cable and the rear camera installation is done. But here's some last bonus tips. You may have noticed that the kit includes a set of smaller straps and a set of longer straps. Normally, I start with the smaller straps and I mount this to the vehicle, but if I feel that this is too stretched out, then I move over to the longer straps. I'm basically trying to find the straps that provide the best hold without overstretching the straps. And the spatula that you saw me use in the video is included in the kit. And you notice that the spatula has a wider side and a narrow side. Technically, there's no incorrect side of as far as which one to use to insert the cable into the trim. It's just a matter of preference. Now, you also may have noticed that I don't always use the spatula. I actually use my fingers quite a bit to pull on the trim to insert the cable into the trim. And that is because the fingers allow me to feel if I'm pulling too hard and prevent me from breaking anything in the process of installing these cables. And my final tip is regarding the rear camera. The kit includes both the adhesive tape that you saw me use on this video or a set of two screws if you really wanted to screw the rear camera into its location. However, I prefer using the double-sided tape because this is fully reversible if I ever wanna take this off versus the screws that may potentially leave a hole in my trim if I ever wanna remove it. So as you saw, the installation of a mirror dash cam is pretty straightforward and fully reversible. Now, I still recommend that you refer to the owner's manual that came with the mirror dash cam to make sure that the dash cam is installed properly and that there are no warranty issues down the road. And if you guys wanna get your own Volvo MU12 mirror dash cam, remember, I put a link to it in the description down below. If you guys have any other questions regarding the installation of the dash cam, please put that in the comments down there. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.